in a special operation unfolding in Oliver Gardens may pen Clarendon. Detectives from the counterterrorism and organized crime investigation branch have successfully conducted raids at two locations. This special operation has led to the recovery of three firearms and the arrest of two men. Details are still emerging, but early reports indicate that the operation is part of a targeted effort to clamp down on illegal firearms and criminal activities in the area. The operation is still ongoing and law enforcement officials are currently on the scene. The identities of the individuals in custody have not yet been released, and the specific types of firearms recovered are still being ascertained. This operation is a part of the broader strategy of the Jamaica Constabulary Force to address and reduce crime across the nation. Authorities are urging the public to avoid the area as the operation continues and to remain vigilant. Further updates will be provided as more information becomes available. A 20-year-old man is now awaiting his court date after a foiled robbery attempt and reported shootout with the police in Comfort District, Manchester on New Year's Eve. The man, Tyree Smile, is a construction worker of Here Tees District in Manchester. He's facing charges of assault with intent to rob, assault at common law, non-fatal shooting, and unauthorized possession of firearm and ammunition. Reports from the police are that about 3.45 p.m., Smile and a man drove to a Minimart in the Comfort District when an argument developed with another man and a tussle ensued. Lawmen who were on patrol saw what was happening and attempted to intervene. However, they said Smile opened gunfire at them. The 20-year-old and his reported accomplice managed to elude the police. The police said soon after, they received information that Smile was being treated at the hospital for gunshot injuries. He was reportedly accosted and gave Lawman information on the whereabouts of the firearm. A Glock 17 9mm pistol with a magazine containing 17 rounds was retrieved. He was subsequently arrested and charged while his court date is being finalized. The Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, led by Mayor of Kingston, Delroy Williams, held its annual feeding program on New Year's Day at the St. William Grant Park in downtown Kingston. Meals and clothing, along with other gifts, were provided to vulnerable groups, especially the homeless. Williams was particularly pleased with the turnout of volunteers at this year's event. And well, we are at the St. William Grand Park where we have our annual New Year's Day um, feeding program where we invite um, vulnerable groups in, um, in particular homeless persons, and we um, share with them and we provide meals and other gift, and gift baskets and other things um, and clothing um, at, at this time, so, and, and gift vouchers and gift bags. This is indeed a very good effort. This is one that the staff members, the councillors, the junior councillors and the various church groups look forward to. Here today we have um, children from the Johnson Town Seventh-day Adventist Church. They are also assisting us today. They come every year, so they look forward to it. This is just part of our feeding program that we do daily, providing two meals per day, 800 meals in each serving um, per day and uh, so this, this is just part of it but this is a special event that the persons look forward to come even those persons who, who would have transitioned from homelessness into you know having their own residence they still come back because they enjoy the camaraderie here and they enjoy the event they come back just to participate more and more persons are understanding the issue of homelessness and more and more persons are volunteering to help not just on new year's day but throughout the year and and so we find that and that is that that signified to us that that is the a good direction in terms of persons see the need to offer themselves uh, and offer service to uh, for, for for good causes the, there is another issue that we continue to follow violence against homeless persons and abuse that's something that we have been following and and so far we believe that we have been making progress with respect to that we are receiving less and less reports of violence against homeless persons or homeless persons being abused when i spoke to 
spoke to the um, the, 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 the poor, poor relief department, they, they, they did inform us um, that they are receiving far less reports with respect to abuse. We have also spoken to the police and that is similar. So, so that's, that's good for us. That's good for us. We, as a municipality, we will continue. We commit ourselves to, to continuing to rid our society of this and all our efforts are geared towards this. So we continue to monitor it and we continue our efforts to rid the society uh, of this practice. Three teenage boys were arrested and charged following the seizure of several rounds of ammunition found in their possession on Bedward Garden Crescent in August Town Kingston 7 on Monday, January 1. The boys are aged between 15 and 17. They have been charged with unauthorized possession of ammunition. Reports from the Halfway Tree Police are that at about 1.58 a.m., lawmen were on patrol in the area when the boys were seen acting in a manner that aroused their suspicion. The boys were approached and searched, and a transparent bag was retrieved. The police said the bag contained 12 9mm cartridges they were arrested and subsequently charged. 19-year-old bartender Tameka Nikki Atherton was reportedly found hanging from a tree near her house on Tuesday, January 2. The police have ruled her death a suicide. Head of the St. Mary Police Division, Superintendent Bobit Morgan Simpson, told the media that this was her second attempt, as she had tried before. According to police reports, Atherton was at home on Sports Road in Islington when she told her mother and stepfather that she was going outside to do laundry. Her stepfather went in search of her when she failed to return after a few hours. He reportedly discovered her body hanging by a hose from a tree. The police were called and Atherton's body was removed. Ongoing speculation suggests that she was facing financial challenges and relationship problems. Grammy Award-winning singer Gramps Morgan will be the headliner at the Meharry at the Bluebird event on Friday to promote sobriety during the month. The initiative falls within the Dry January USA tradition that has been practiced for the last few years. The event will take place at the Bluebird Cafe in Nashville, Tennessee. Adding that this will be his first part promoting Dry January, Morgan noted that performing for previous worthy causes is what opened this window of opportunity. Part proceeds from the concert will go towards Meharry University, while the remainder will be pumped into research to fight alcohol and drug addiction and also to spread awareness about Dry January. Gramps, whose real name is Roy Morgan, is a member of sibling band Morgan's Heritage. The outfit won the Grammy for Best Reggae Album in 2016 for Strictly Roots. Two years later, the act secured a nomination for Avracadabra. In the meantime, he is encouraging other Jamaican entertainers to lend a hand in alleviating alcoholism and drug addiction in their circles. Morgan said he think many more entertainers can get involved by spreading the word about alcohol addiction and helping many in their own communities that surround them. If you're in the local job market searching for employment, then the hospitality sector might be the one for you. Currently, the sector boasts a wide array of opportunities for persons to take advantage of. We tell you all about it on this week's Stories in Roundup. Gone are the days when Jamaica's hospitality sector was only operational during the winter months. That type of job arrangement discouraged many Jamaicans from joining the sector, as they didn't have consistent employment throughout the year. And there was a big howl about how the workers of tourism are being paid at the lowest end of the salary scales, and that the tenure was almost non-existent and that they were on contract for a few months and they are off and gone and then we also had there was no social security and there was no health arrangements and so the environment around the tourism uh, labor arrangements was almost non-existent for anyone who really wants to have a career and a future 
in any area. Minister of Tourism Edmund Bartlett. Now, those challenges of the past have changed, with the market ripe for employment opportunities, with improved job security and labour market arrangements. Minister Bartlett says with the continued growth of stopover arrivals over the past eight years, Jamaica has transitioned away from being a seasonal market, only opening during the winter months, to a year-round destination. He adds that through the efforts of the Jamaica Center for Tourism Innovation, JCTI, there are great opportunities to gain certification and earn even higher salaries. The Center for Tourism Innovation was about that. It was about then looking at workers who are already in the system. So we recognize that people were working on the job, but their horizon for promotion and for mobility either didn't exist or was very limited. And so the way that we can now classify our workers is as a result of their certification. And once you can certify and you can classify, then you can remunerate according to classification. Minister Bartlett says discussions are also on the way with several universities to expand training arrangements at the JCTI in the new year. I just had some discussions with the University of Lucerne in Switzerland where we are going to be partnering and next year, February, the UNWTO will be here February 15th, 16th and 17th and the Executive Secretary Natalia Bayona, who is responsible for the whole education program for the world, will be here with us and we will begin a new process of collaboration in an international way to ensure that every person who graduates from the JCTI does not only have a recognition in the Caribbean, but anywhere in the world that they go to peddle their an estimated 45,000 new jobs are expected to come on stream in the sector over the next few years as several new hotels and their accompanying rooms are constructed. Mr. Bartlett says the ministry is committed to training and certifying Jamaicans to meet the impending demand via the JCTI, the Hart NSTA Trust and other institutions. Next year we begin to open as of April. We open the first thousand, then we go to the next 700, then we go to another 450. And then across the road, down the bottom, we have the Hard Rock Unico going on. And I just finished negotiating for another 2,000 room right beside it. And then we talked today about another 750 in Trelawney, and we're moving to that 20,000. Minister of Tourism, Edmund Bartlett. In our No Jamaica segment, Hope Zoo Kingston. The Hope Zoo located in Kingston is a non-profit zoological garden and wildlife rehabilitation center and home to a diverse collection of over 1,000 animals. These include 400 birds and 75 animals, including native species and exotic creatures. Explore the beautifully landscaped grounds and encounter lions, monkeys, crocodiles and more for a fun family outing. Join guided tours and nature excursions led by knowledgeable local guides who prioritize conservation and sustainable practices. That's it for this week's Tourism Roundup. 